I'm The Voice, and this is a Divi community-produced video from the foundation. We can segue into censorship resistance, because this is all about your data and being able to make sure that, uh, that you're in control of your own assets. This is the issue with some of these services, is they are API-centered. Um, we're talking about desktop wallet. Uh, it's a full node. It's actually called a reference client, but it's a full node too. Um, I think that's a good start for our next topic. That's right. Yeah. Let's, let's talk about the DV desktop wallet. So the DV desktop wallet has been a little bit uh, in the background for a few years because the mobile wallet was, um, getting all the attention, but the, the desktop wallet is actually one of the core of the DV the DV network, right? Mm -hmm. The desktop wallet allow you to be staking. And this is, this is the only way, right? Either through the desktop wallet or the CLI wallet, which is basically the core with, um, you know, um, common light interface. So it's not, it's not really user-friendly, but you have all the functionality and then the desktop wallet is basically built on top of that and allows you to have a full node, like a complete element of the blockchain uh, of the network that is talking with your peers. So you're completely autonomous. There is no intermediary in between you yes. and your peers, and you have a full copy of the blockchain and you're basically uh, ga a guarantee, like you are a guarant of the security of the network, Correct. A guarant of the legitimacy of the data. So it is, it is the only way you're truly sovereign um, in a blockchain network. Right. Mm -hmm. Like we, we're always talking about, um, the importance of, uh, the sovereignty, uh, so avoiding the censorship, everything that Correct. would allow censorship in an infrastructure. And, and basically the only way is having a full node, like being part of, of this network. Like if you send a transaction, it's relayed directly by your node to your peers. Uh, when you receive a blocks from the network, you add that to, to your database, to your mm -hmm. blockchain, basically. Exactly. And, and it is really the only way we take back control on, on our economy. Right. And the DV desktop wallet is actually very lightweight. Um, it's, it's pretty simple. Um, we actually will talk in the next segment about, um, what it has and uh, what's coming, but it is, it is one of the easiest software with which you can take part in the blockchain. Um, yeah, it's, think, it's as simple as that. I think, I think if you go back and if, if you're listening to this, you've probably listened to me before. I'm always trying to encourage people, even from that beginner blockchain level, to just pick up books that you can review and know that when you review them, it's going to be over your head. I just start with that. Just start with that right there, that that sometimes unless you're a nerd, this is going to be over your head, and that's the way I started. But there's a great book by Andreas Antonopoulos, um, yeah. which is called Mastering Bitcoin. I know, Rob, you have it. I don't know if you mm -hmm. have it, Neeks. I know Random String has it. Um, a lot of people have it. It's not a book that you just wake up on Saturday morning and go, I want to read. You're, you just It's not, not a, a book for pleasure unless you're absolutely curious. My point in bringing that up is, is that that the version two of the book, which you can still get, there's a version one, a version two, a release one, release two, release three is coming. Um, editions, a third edition, sorry. Not release, I'm thinking of software. Um, it's a third edition is coming. The second edition has an image in there, It's in, and he uses a term which you may have seen me use. You probably just heard me use it. Andreas calls it a reference client. Because a full node is a full node has got the full blockchain. A full node may have a routing node on it, but a full node may not also have a wallet, but it can. So we have those three things. But the desktop is actually all four. And that's what makes it a reference client because it's got the wallet, it has the mining function, it has a Divi miner in it, it has the blockchain, and it has a routing node. Really, when you have those four features all together, you are the blockchain. You are a node on that network, both supporting and building and routing and validating everything. And so if we just go back to what I stated in the previous segment, you don't have an API that you need to reach out and get your information from. 
you're actually communicating as part of the actual blockchain. So any data and information you want is right there at your fingertips. When you process a transaction that you're sending out, you don't send it to anyone else. You send it right out through your own node to the blockchain, to that what's called a memory pool where all the transactions go. You don't have to go through someone else. And I know that we embrace these new technologies, but and, and I, I do mean to be a little bit dismissive when I make this statement. It seems to be that crypto has turned away from where Satoshi was wanting us to go, and they've gone back to like 1992, and they're embracing AOL because uh -huh. they're going through somebody else's service to both get their information, this is data, to send their data, <laughs> to, to manage their data. Everything is done through somebody else. It's not centralized to the point to where they have keys. You still own your keys, but really to do anything, to display your data, sync your data, manage your, manage your coins, whatever it is, you have to go through AOL to get there. And that doesn't make sense. This is freedom. This is the way, almost the way the internet really got started and even was before we had the big companies come back in is there was a little bit more freedom in, in, involved, a little bit more autonomy involved, a little bit more sovereignty. This is what Satoshi wanted us to do, which is to run our own nodes. Doesn't mean everybody's gonna do that, but Satoshi wanted us to run our own nodes. And the Divi desktop is super easy and will pretty much run on almost anything. And the core certainly will pretty much run on anything. I know there's some changes that'll come that'll make it run on even more devices and, and make it even more lightweight. So I'm excited because when you're acting as an operator on the blockchain, you are totally free. And that's yeah, what gotta, excites me. Yeah, you gotta remember though, like, I mean, I know you know this, but it's a lot like getting your food from your garden versus getting your food from the store, right? So I enjoy having a garden. It's way more work. I think the food is better. I think everything is better about it, but yeah. it sure is easier going to the store. <laughs> you know, getting maybe something worse. Um, uh, but I think it's more like it, going to fast quickly. food. I think I think maybe. it's because when you go to the store, yes, you can buy pre-prepared, but generally you I would hope to think that most people are not. I mean, at least if they're buying cheese or eggs or something, you yeah. know, you know they're gonna make something with it. It's more like you're going to fast food for every meal. If you don't think you're gonna feel sick after a while. You're crazy. <laughs> you just yeah, can't eat I a was big getting Mac more at the convenience meal. that that going to the yeah. store, you're relying on somebody else, right? And yeah, and and it might be fine for a while. Uh, the stores might be fine for a while, and then they're not. Like that just happened to us, yeah. to everybody on the planet, right? <laughs> so, uh, and it happens more often in places like Venezuela. But to everybody on the planet, we all had we all had supply shock all of a sudden, and that's because we all rely uh, to some degree on somebody else serving us and. When it's massive, it does work uh, for the most part, but you're relying on it always working. Whereas when you're on, when you're running your own node, you're relying on you. You you built your garden. It's a good garden. It works all the time. Like let's pretend we don't have winters because we don't. <laughs> so, um, but or let's say you got a greenhouse, um, and it just keeps on working. You gotta check it. You gotta you know you gotta make sure it has power. You gotta make sure your internet's up. It, it's you, um, but. Uh, you're definitely in control of all your funds. And more importantly, you're in control of the information that goes in, in and out of your house. Um, so it's definitely more work. And I think some people, but what, what voice is saying is like this desktop, it's, it's, I mean, you use your computer anyway. Like it's not much more work. Yeah. Just, yeah. yeah. I mean, so, you just you right you let it sink. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Right. I that's mean, right. And, and I mean, we, there are still things that, actually make it a bit inconvenient and that's that's the reason right that's the reason people are using a lot more centralized options which is really um probably the most far away you can think about the objectives of crypto yeah. but there are also people who use like light wallet models right like we actually have the dv mobile wallet which mm -hmm. is used by people who would uh, most likely never want to use a desktop wallet because they actually like the convenience of of this situation and 
it is yeah. obviously it's not a centralized wallet. It is uh, it is your keys. Uh, nobody else get a copy of your keys. So it is. It, it is, is a, a centralized cool wallet. Let's just right? make that clear. It is a centralized wallet. It's a self-custody centralized wallet. The wallet yeah, yeah. won't run unless you connect to those APIs. Let's just be clear about that. That is that is what that is what all light wallets are. So this isn't a nitpick on any specific wallet. Exodus, Trust Wallet, Coinbase self-custody, all of those wallets are centralized from that point of data. They can't know anything unless they connect to an API. They are just the shells. And it shells. is the same for web wallets, right? Wallet yeah, web Connect wallets, totally, and MetaMask yes. Wallet and all those yep, wallets. All hundred percent, hundred percent. Again, yes. they are they are a, a, like still a very good secondary option because Absolutely. again, it's your keys. Those are still trustless. There's, it's still very important. Like those those characteristics are very critical. But for the convenience, we tend to. Um, you know, forget that having your own node and validating the transactions and t make like being part of the blockchain is actually what makes that alternative viable, right? Like if nobody Correct. was running a node, there There'd would be, be no, no blockchain. blockchain. <laughs> yes, yeah. exactly. If there were, if there were no full node for Bitcoin, if there were no miners, if there were no like again some validators, miners for sure. uh, Ethereum, there would be no network. Like no, no transaction would be moving. Exactly. Like it would, you would exactly. click send, but it would not happen. So, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So it is very important to remind that and, and to see what the DV wallet offers for, for this situation. Right. And if you really want to interact with the blockchain, verify transaction, look at the history, um, check, like you can actually do pretty intense management and. Right now, it's Easily. not uh, implemented in the wallet, but we will we will definitely add that moving forward. But you can manage currently your unspent transaction. You can start a staking vote. Um, I think you, we've talked a, a lot about that, but it is a, a unique feature that we have that is really allowing very easily with one or two clicks to, to get a staking vote, a remote vote that is a component, again, of the blockchain. and the blockchain couldn't run without without those without those exactly <laughs>